In this video, you'll find out how I managed to increase my threshold or FTP or whatever you want to call it by about 100 watts over the past few years and how you can too. Now there's three things that I've done over the years that have made me a better cyclist. And they're to use a good combination of indoor and outdoor training, to do the right sorts of sessions, and also to control my training using a few tools and data. I'll go into a little bit more of that as we go through the video, but that's the headlines. Now I naively thought that I had a good threshold power for triathlon because I was quite powerful in general. Like I could put out a lot of power, I did quite well within sessions, and I was outdoing people. And usually that's a good indication that you're pretty strong. But this wasn't really the case and I was getting a false sense of security. I was powerful, but not really aerobically strong. This meant that when it came to a triathlon, I spent a lot of energy in the swim that then didn't translate into the bike. It left me being pretty pathetic in all honesty. So we're currently about 300 meters, did you say? Yeah. <laughs> Elevation in Wales, minus two degrees. We're that high up we're in the clouds, there's frost on the ground, can't feel my toes. We're still here, three hours in, five hours in total. Loving life. And it feels like summer. <laughs> <laughs> to be a good traffic, you have to be able to sustain a lot of power for a, a long time and I wasn't able to do that. You've got to have strength in depth, not just strength. And it took me far too long to realize this, but not only that, to get my training right with my coach. And I think it's important to put that across to you guys as well now, not just for me, but you don't have to get the training wrong. You can have guidance, you can get it right early on. You don't have to carry on fooling yourself that you're somewhere that you're not. Because eventually I did manage to tune that engine correctly and it's had good results. You look like a little chode. I am a little chode, friend. Now, I don't find this now so much, but in the past, I found it quite tough mentally to get on the bike, whether that be indoors or outdoors. So I've tried to make it as easy as possible for myself to do this, and that's by having good kit, having a good setup, so that it's easy for me to do. It's easy for me to get on the bike and just go. And by having a good rotor, so just pretty templated week in terms of I know which days I'm indoors, which days I'm outdoors, it means that I don't really have to think about it and I know what I'm doing on what day and it just makes that so much easier just to get on and do it. Have you got a vlog plan this week? No. All right, well, yeah, I do have a vlog plan. What do you want to talk about? What are we talking about? We have to go. So, uh, go to the this is a, uh, this, we're going to do a, well, say, say we. Josh is going to edit this now. This is us in Wales on Saturday and Not only that, it makes it far more enjoyable if you know what you're doing and when you're doing it. So if you're meeting up with friends every Wednesday and Saturday like I do, that's a good benchmark that you can just look forward to every single week. And by looking forward to it and doing more of these things and actually wanting to go out and do more work and be consistent, obviously allows you to improve because consistency is key. Consistency is what we're looking for, it's the end game. On a classic Saturday long ride, we're going to do four and a half, five hours or so. It's lovely weather. Pretty Baltic, but stunning nonetheless, even though you can't see Shaggle. You can see the sun trying to come through the cloud behind Josh. But it's a joyous day, isn't it? Yeah. Why is that? Not much wind. And? Frosty. Oh, and on, also, yeah. there's something. Josh has obviously got a new toy. <laughs> what is this? This is the Envy Melee. And it's an absolute beast. Set up outrageously as well. Can't really complain. Fuck, I'm good. So, as well as consistency, you obviously want to be doing the right sort of training for you. And for me, I've responded pretty well to volume, but not only that, a good combination of threshold, tempo, and zone two work. So. Obviously it's different for different people and you'll need different things. That's why you should use a coach and have that guidance. But yeah, no, for me, I think that being able to have that right sort of training and doing those 
threshold or tempo or VO2 sessions as and when they're appropriate has been fundamental to allow me to actually improve over the seasons. Right, I've got a bike session to do. This is the first one after Christmas, so don't really know how it's gonna go, but it's a build session so that I'm gonna try and have a bit of a gauge as to where I'm at. It's on the Zwift, it's on the TT bike, but yeah. I've got an actual bike test on Thursday, so it'll be interesting to see how I fare in comparison to that. So after the past week or two, just settling back into training. It's tough after having a bit of a time, time away, time off, skiing and whatnot. My heart rate's quite elevated. I don't know why. It could have been because I was ill, could have been the altitude taking a week or two off, any of the above. But I'm just settling back into it nice and easy. And yeah, this is, this whole point of this session is just have a bit of a gauge of where I'm at, control the intensity, so that after that, I can again, look at controlling intensity in sessions and in aerobic stuff. It's a pretty solid session, mind. Uh, it's one that <laughs> is tried and tested with myself and proven to work pretty well. Just my physiology, it's long, solid. It's a big build, essentially. 24, 16, 12, eight minutes. Going up about 20 watts each time. And I'll take a lactic measuring as I go. That'll then be interesting to have a look at what's going on on Thursday when I actually have the lab tests and make sure that everything's matching up nicely. On top of doing the right sort of training, you have to control that training. So actually make sure that it's doing what you want it to be doing. Actually look under the hood, don't just guess, don't just go by feel. I, I think that it's a little bit, not silly, but it's really tough to do unless you're really in tune with your body. And I don't really believe that unless you're a professional athlete that's been doing it for a number of years, and even then I'm not sure that it's truly correct to go just on perceived effort or what you think is correct. I think that you've got to actually measure with heart rate, with lactic, maybe not lactic so much as an age group athlete, but especially as professional, and then a power meter or power, like whether that be from pedals or a turbo or whatever it is, having those different metrics is far more beneficial to kind of read off of than just one or two. So this will be a 30 minute warm up build to about 310 watt it, watt it, watts, watts, 310 watts. And I'll do a few little efforts and then get into the session, which is starting at 310 and building up to about 370 ish by the end. So in and around threshold at the back end. Again, nothing too intense, just building up that steady, steady effort. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what the lactics are saying because I'll measure myself as I go, look at the heart rate as I go, and just uh, yeah, make sure everything's in check. <laughs> I just think these sessions are class class for just getting a lot of work at decent power done and not only that working really well with my physiology just making sure that it's stroking the threshold up nicely not for everyone mind like obviously check with your coach check with your plan make sure it's the right thing for you but this is definitely something that works well for me quite top end heavy so to come and work from bottom up works quite well. Lactic obviously isn't necessary, but it's something that I use just to monitor intensity again and have that extra metric. Definitely, definitely not necessary. But heart rate and power, yeah, I definitely think you should be using that just to get those two metrics so that you can actually measure improvement over time. Obviously, like you want to be faster on race day, but in terms of your actual under the hood physiology, it gives you a very good gauge of where you're at. Okay, session done. It was all right, you know. Uh, my legs didn't feel fantastic. I think just had last week's volume in them about 25 hours last week so for the first week back solid but not hopefully not pushing the boat out too much but yeah i mean the lactics were relatively controlled i didn't go too hard at the back end still probably in and around threshold up on that top wattage about 370 but we'll see come uh, thursday because i'm gonna get in the lab 
do it properly with a ramp test. But yeah, I'm happy with that. Like, I can't really complain at this point in the season. Uh, <laughs> legs don't feel fresh, but don't feel battered either. So yeah, all in all, good little sesh or big sesh or average sesh, whatever. But yeah, this coupled with a bit more volume, hopefully uh, it will do me justice or I'll do it justice and we'll find some more watts just in the legs. What I will say is that my heart rate was actually quite high. Again, don't know whether this is still off the back of coming back into training or whether it's altitude or it wasn't that high, but something's just not normal. And maybe just with a bit more training, it'll come back down, but for the time being, a little bit abnormal for me. I've usually got a bit of an elephant heart, it's really low, but not at the moment, it seems a bit, a bit elevated. So worth monitoring and seeing what happens. Hopefully it will, uh, will resolve itself over time. Obviously I've been doing this for a fair few years now and it's accumulated over time. I've done loads of training, especially cycling, and it's really allowed me to increase and improve that aerobic endurance, the threshold, uh, FTP, whatever you want to call it. And now I'm sticking at the front of races and I'm not being completely spent out of the water. And I'm actually able to put down what I'm seeing in training because I understand what the numbers are in training. I understand how that's going to relate to a race. And to be honest, I think if I'm looking back at data that I accumulated four years ago in comparison to now, it is honestly about 100 watts that I've improved my FTP or threshold on over in those years. So 100 watts is mental. That's so, so much power, so much more power than what I had. But I used to think that it was a lot of power. I could do short five minute efforts, which did put everyone else in the bin, but it wasn't correlating into race performances. But now I can see why. I can see why that was happening. I had a big battery, big top end, and that wasn't conducive to a triathlon necessarily at that time. But yeah, I hope that sheds a little bit of light on me and maybe you and how you can relate to it and how you could improve. If it has, let me know in the comments below. Always keen to hear. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.